Well, it's us from Schmuckcast. This is uh, Matt Weatherford. And, and this is Lenny Sherman. And Matt Weatherford. I'm Lenny Sherman. Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Yes, that's right. No, that's Matt Weatherford, actually. It's good to have you back. We did one of these before, right? Quite a while ago. A while back. Like five years ago. So I, I recently posted a Halloween franchise review on Friday the 13th, and tomorrow was going to be another one. And my buddy here decided he wanted to chime in with his two cents, and it's much better to riff off of each other and come up with ideas together than by myself. Much like sex. <laughs> anyway. Well, we can start with Freddy if that's cool. I mean, that's the last sure. one you're doing. So Nightmare on Elm Street one. came yep. out and uh, take the people back down memory lane. When did you first see Freddy? Um, that's a good question. Around the same time I saw Jason. Okay. It was um, probably, it had to be Freddy's Dead had come out in 91. Oh. Uh-huh. And... So it was probably just starting its theatrical run, or maybe it was they were working on making it. So it must have been 89 or 90. Um, right around the time, like, Jason Takes Manhattan was 89. So that started its cable run, like, in 89, 90. So right around then, that's when I really started to get into Jason and Freddy. Was it the first Freddy you saw first? or No, I, I, that was one of the last ones I saw, Oh, actually. okay. Um, the first one I saw was Freddy's Revenge. Oh, God. Oh, the second one, okay. Yeah. Re later retitled Fruity's Revenge, actually. <laughs> no. For certain copyright issues. Stop. Well, it was. It was gay, bro. Yeah, I didn't know that back <laughs> then. Stuff. It was all subtext. It was all subtext. Um, no, it was funny. Um, it t uh, I, my mom had bought it for me used uh, back, you know, when they were like blockbusters. I forgot where she got it, but a lot of the times, like the blockbusters, the video stores, they would sell inventory of older movies that they wouldn't need anymore. So she bought it for me on VHS for like five bucks. It was in a nice clamshell case. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I don't know what happened to it. And it's so funny because that copy was so worn out because it was a used copy that other people had rented. So I remember especially the intro to that movie was so messed up. It was like lines would run through it because the tape had been used so many times. With the bus, right? With the bus scene, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> And, and so I was used to watching it that way, and then years later when I got it on DVD, it was kind of weird to see it in pristine condition. Um, but that was my first introduction to Freddy. Um, I didn't know much about the movies, because Freddy's Revenge is one of those that stands separately. It doesn't... Yeah, it follows know, its own formula. Yeah, the only reference to the original movie is when Jesse is cleaning out his room, and they find Nancy's diary. Oh, you're right. And she starts reading through it. He and I was like, okay. to close the drawer. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> let's not forget that. I liked it. I, I mean, part two, I've always appreciated for the special effects mm -hmm. and I just thought it was really innovative back then. I thought it was creepy that you gotta remember it. This was the first one I watched. So I was watching it and I had heard that, okay, well, Freddie invade your dreams. But in, that was the one where he, um, invaded Jesse's body, body yeah. and he was using Jesse as an avatar to interact with the real world. You've got the body, I've got the brains, yeah. right? And even in that movie, he was still really terrifying. He was in Shadow a yeah. lot of the time, Robert England. Um, the first I, three Freddies, really, he was still... I remember specifically in that movie, too, the scene where Freddy comes out of Jesse's body and they show the claws. Best the, the fingernails coming out of his fingers. The eyeball in the throat. Yep. Best and, part in the movie. And the head, the face coming out of his chest. Um, and just all yeah, that stuff. the music, everything was just phenomenal yeah. in that scene. The intro too, the the opening title of that movie mm -hmm. is so different from any of the other ones. I agree. Um, what was with the bird though? Did you ever? Did as you a explain? kid, that, <laughs> as a kid, that didn't bother me too much. It was a hot room. I like Clue Gulliger in that. He plays the dad. He, yeah. He's done a lot of horror movies. He used to do a lot of, I think, westerns. Mm -hmm. And then in his later years, he even said in an interview I I was watching when we were doing Return of the Living Dead. He was talking about an actor his age, even in the 80s, um, actors like him had a hard time finding work, so they kind of had to take the horror movie roles, and yeah. he was glad he did it. You spotted um, him in American Beauty, right? Was Clue Gulliver? Same? Yeah, the same... I think so. Yeah, he was the the gay dad or whatever. No, no, that wasn't Clue Gulliver. That oh. was... Um, it was someone else. Cooper. Um, Chris Cooper. Okay. Who was in uh, Interstate 60. Interstate 60, okay. Yes. So anyway. anyway. Sorry. My, my Back on topic. Yeah. Um but Clue Gulliger was a dad in that, and I, I just thought his performance in that so believable as, like, the dad who was like, oh, he just needs a good kick in the ass, you know? Um, yeah, and it was a movie about a, a troubled kid, um, really troubled, who was having this recurring thing happen. I mean, Freddy really messed with him in that movie more than he does in the kids in the first movie. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I saw two, and then I think my mom actually got me part five. 
together. Oh, God, the dream child. Yeah. Well, yeah, and even as a kid, I think I liked part two better than five. But those were the only two I had seen. Hmm. I hadn't seen any of the other ones until my dad finally went and rented them all. And um, I remember when I saw the original one, it, it really took me by surprise because that was the one that, out of all of them, it felt more gritty and more real. You yeah. could, I mean, it almost looks like a movie out of the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, um, I would guess that. And this goes without saying, you know, rest in peace was Craven. I mean, just how much he brought to the horror genre and how much we admire him for sure. And just, you can't start a Nightmare on Elm Street review and without mentioning him because, you know, without him it wouldn't exist. And, you know, it just, yeah. I, I still think it's his best movie. I mean, it's just perfect. I mean, there's not a wasted moment in that movie, really. Maybe with the mom. I don't know. Oh, you didn't like the mom in that? It was, it was whatever. I don't know. You don't like the performance? That's like the only thing I can think of that might, but really the rest of the movie is perfect. Like, it just is. It's, what, under 90 minutes? Well, it's like 90 minutes anyways. Yeah. yeah. I like the mom in that. Scary. And I, I, I love the hook in that movie because a lot of horror movies, either the killer is some monster that you can't kill or it's a regular guy that you can't figure out who they are and nobody ever brings a gun to these things. But because you're dealing with a dream demon, you have this mm -hmm. excellent hook where midway through the movie... Nancy is able to pull something out of her dream and realizes yeah. that's how she can kill the monster. And obviously with sequels, you have to break that formula so you can bring him back. But um, I just love in that original film that hook. Um, you don't see very many of those in, in Well, and it works because it's so universal because everyone dreams. Yeah. Everyone sleeps. And actually when yeah. Wes Craven showed the script to Sean Cunningham... Cunningham was even like, this isn't going to be scary because it happens in a dream and it'll people will know it'll be a dream and it won't be scary, mm -hmm. you know. And I think I love Friday the Thirteenth, but I think the original Nightmare is light years ahead of its time. Of yeah, and of all the Jason movies too, probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I love I would that. Agree. First, I can't say enough good things about that. Johnny Depp, I think yeah. that was his first Woo! role. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's a universal fear. That's that's what makes good horror movies, like Jaws with water, and like you know, everyone's been swimming, so everyone I can identify. Did you know with. that Nightmare was in part based on a real story? Yeah, he read it in a newspaper. I a think newspaper article. Yeah, yeah, something. about yeah. kids committing suicide. I think it was. Or uh, there was one kid spe specifically, and I don't know if they, um, I don't know if they uh, solved the case, but it was a kid who was having these nightmares, and um, they were invest. The parents were investigating it, and they found like. Uh, um, a coffee maker in his closet mm -hmm. that he was using to help himself <laughs> keep himself awake. Yeah, and um, the pills, the no dose pills or whatever. Yeah, and um, he was saying the kid was saying that these dreams they don't feel like dreams; they feel like something else. Like he really felt that someone was coming after him, and they found him dead. Um, yeah, that's messed up. Yeah. So, uh, and the hills have eyes, and last house on the left were both inspired by newspaper clippings. So Wes has always instilled a little bit of reality into his horror movies. He is just such a great horror director. He knows mm -hmm. how to make a movie scary. And anyway, we can wing this thing. I mean, I was hoping maybe just a lot of our favorite horror movies. You know, it's the month of October. It's it's the time to settle in and watch a bunch of scary movies. You know, that's my favorite way to celebrate. And I'm sure you have movies that you do at least once a year on every month of October. Oh, yeah. I have my usual slate of movies, you know, usually the Evil Dead trilogy and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is easily in there. You know, I like The Exorcist. You know, it might not be a, such a scary movie anymore, but I think it's still just a good movie. It's I mean, effective. I can see... I've never been a huge Exorcist fan, but I can definitely yeah. try to get in into that, you know, kind of feeling of what it was like to see that movie back yeah. when it came and out. And now originally. that you have a daughter, it's even it can be even more personal, you know. Yeah. Something like that. I mean... But it's just a good movie. Just because it's I not think scary. it's more... I think it's scarier more towards religious, like, yeah. Catholic people. I was raised really Jewish, so none of that stuff is really effective to me. I'm, yeah. I, what, what's... Uh, the worst fear to me is getting up and going to work in the morning. <laughs> they should make a movie about that, a horror movie. There we go. And it's like a, <laughs> it's just a, a day, five... a day in your life. My horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, me getting up. It's just a five minute movie. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get up. I want to get up. Oh fuck! It's eight o'clock. No. Oh, well. Get in the shower, jerk off, and drive to work. No, just... <laughs> we'll edit that well, part out. We were. Uh, I guess we were going to do a whole series of Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the Thirteenth. However you want to do it. I mean, I was. We just did saying, a pod. Wing it. Man. We did just a do all horror movies. We did a podcast of Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, it was our second podcast we ever did, and I regret that one because the, I thought it sounded cool. Well, the, it was a we, good discussion, but for some reason I was just figuring out how to do podcasting, mm -hmm. so the audio quality is terrible in that one. 
Yeah. So I thought we could maybe redo it, but we can cover all we horror can movies. Do that anything. I um, mean, the it's one, October. And... The one franchise that I wanted to revisit, and I know you don't have a ton of experience with this, but I wanted to do a video on the Toxic Avenger franchise. Oh, yeah, yeah. I still might do one. I've done the original Toxic Avenger. I've covered that one to death. But I feel like, first of all, that movie has a fan base, but I still don't feel like enough people talk about that movie. That's fair. And it's huh? not just a horror movie, to be fair. It's really a superhero movie with horror elements. It's a horror, action, comedy, superhero movie with romance. It's it's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a fun movie to watch. But people don't always... I've never really heard people talk about the sequels, which are... They get progressively worse. For good worse. reason, maybe. Yeah, but I, I feel like if you're going to talk about a good movie, bad movies can be just as fun to talk about. Yeah, I agree. And uh, so how many of the Toxic Avengers have you seen? Just the first just one? Just that first one, then didn't okay. we watch uh, part four or Citizen Toxic? Maybe. What was the one you showed when it starts in the classroom and all the kids are like Big shitting tarted. their pants? Yeah, Citizen Toxic. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> I'm just joking. Well, I, I honestly don't like the fourth one for that reason. I, I find it kind of silly. It doesn't take itself seriously yeah. as a movie. And none of these these movies are all very goofy. If you know anything about trauma movies, um, what's great about them is this great independent spirit. They can do whatever they want because they don't try to get it past censors. They don't try to make movies for everybody. They they make vil films as violent, as visceral, as pornographic as they want, really, because some of these films do border on softcore porn, um, and they just distribute them online and on video, and they can do whatever they, they want. They do it for themselves, yeah. really. That's what they do. Um, and they're very cheaply made, of course. They make movies like Rabid Grannies and Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. Uh, one of my favorites is actually um, Terror Firmer, which is not for everybody. I love that movie because it's all about filmmaking. Um, and Lloyd Kaufman, who is the, the guy who um, kind of, he started Troma and he still to this day is the president of Troma, um, directs a lot of these movies. And the one that kind of put him on the map was the 1984 film, The Toxic Avenger. Um, I, whenever I show this to people, especially people who've never seen it, they always end up liking it. Um, there's only one guy I know of who didn't like it, a guy who's like half my age. Damn. who no, a guy I used to work. If you're with, listening, hello. He might no. actually see this. A guy I used to work with years ago. I, I recommended to him. He saw it, didn't like it because he he's more into like the Marvel movies. You can't watch Toxic Avenger and expect Marvel. This movie was made yeah. for like three dollars. It's not for Marvel people. No, no. It might be. Um, essentially, what it is, it's a very low budget film. It's about this nerd Melvin who um these he works at this health spa. He's a janitor. He's a janitor and he and he gets picked on like. All the time, like in the worst ways, he just gets picked on. They show her boobs, right? Doesn't she show him her boobs? Well, that's yeah. I we can I'm get sorry, into I'm details, <laughs> but um, essentially they play a really bad prank on him, and it, it ends up in him falling into a vat of toxic waste, and it mutates him into this monster, the first superhero from New Jersey, and he's all deformed, and they don't show you what he. It's funny because they keep they try to keep what he looks like throughout the movie a secret, no. and, but the box shows him completely. So there's no surprise. The cat's out but of the bag. It's kind of like, um, how would you describe him? Like a mix between the Incredible Hulk and Swamp Thing, kind of. That's perfect. Yeah. That's and uh, perfect. what's funny is one, part of the joke is they they have him dress up in this pink tutu. So when he like a ballerina's tutu, and when he transforms, he wears the tutu the whole time, the dress. So it's it's pretty funny. I um, really remember the restaurant sequence for some reason. I remember that one. Yeah, a lot. it's done very Shoot tongue in the dog and yeah, it's done very tongue in cheek. It's very funny, but what's kind of weird about it is they also do these really extreme things, like you said, where the the bad guys come in and they shoot the she's a, it's a seeing eye dog. They shoot him because he's barking too much, and then they attempt to rape a blind woman right before Toxie comes in and kills them. And that's what's great about this movie is that it's a superhero movie. He only kills bad people. It's basically like if Superman went around and instead of waiting for the police, he just kills them himself. <laughs> that's right. It's almost like if the Joker was a good guy. It's my just... dad when I was like we were like I was like ten. He rented us rented the Toxic Avenger because I guess it was a comic book at first or no was it a cartoon it, series? It, it something? became a cartoon years later. He recognized it from somewhere. Yeah. He started the movie and like ten minutes in, he's like, "We're not watching this stuff." <laughs> the kid got his head ran over and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I was like ten years old. My dad's like, "Nope." <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it was a cartoon in the nineties called Toxic. <laughs> he's Toxic... like, "This is not what I was expecting at all." <laughs> yeah, well, it was a cartoon called Toxic Crusaders, and I remember seeing Toxic Avenger in video stores mm. before I'd ever seen the movie. But this was when like the Ninja Turtles live action movie came out, so I was like, "Oh, okay, so." The Toxic Avenger is kind of the same thing. They took the cartoon oh, and true. made it into a live-action movie. Yeah. That's what I thought. 
Then I saw the movie. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> like they took a kids' cartoon and made it into an R-rated movie. Yeah. It's that's not the case at all. What happened was they made the movies, and then some studio approached Lloyd Kaufman wanting to do a kid-friendly version of it. They saw like toys and things. So if you watch Toxic Crusaders, it's totally kid-friendly, but it's based off of this very adult movie. Don't let your kids see this. <laughs> the other thing was, I had the VHS tape of Toxic Avenger as a kid, mm -hmm. and it was, the box says unrated, but they cut a lot of stuff out. So when I saw the movie on DVD, which is the director's cut, they had a lot of stuff in there that offended me. Like, I, at first, I hated it because I'm like, oh my God, like, the original version I had, the scene where they run the kid over on the bike, yeah. they didn't actually show them running over his head. They didn't, they cut that whole thing out. Like, they showed them running him over and stuff. This is already him. bad enough. Right. They were to show over. them actually. But then they, he's not dead yet. And these bad guys that are doing it, they make a game out of it where, points depending and on, stuff, yeah, yeah, depending on what race you are and how old you are, they award you points. And so he's not completely dead. He's still squirming on the ground. So they back the car up and run over his head. He's like a 12 year old boy. Yeah, the body's like twitching and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this is not a movie for every. The movie actually starts off with a warning. Like this yeah. contains. Ex it takes a lot of getting violence. used to. Yeah. You know, it does. And I think a lot of people didn't like it at first. I think I mean, it later just found life on VHS and video and became a cult following because, you know, I think people rewatched it and then they grew on them. Yeah, you know, how many times have you seen Toxic Avenger, do you think? Tons. Yeah. Tons. And it just and gets better. It's like, not something I normally do on Halloween because it's not yeah. a it's not horror really movie, per se. exclusively a horror movie, yeah. but it's it's definitely got horror elements. It's very very it's one of the goriest movies I've ever seen. But for all the right reasons. You you have to be in the mood to watch this. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like uh, a good one to compare it to is like Army of Darkness or Gremlins 2. Yeah. A movie mm -hmm. that definitely has the horror elements in there, but it's got a very Quirky, almost Looney Tunes sense of humor. Yeah. Um, it does. Yeah, it's. I can't <laughs> say it's. It's legitimately a good movie, um, but it is a trauma movie. And uh, just real briefly to talk about the sequels, I loved the first one so much as a kid that I really wanted to see parts two and three. At that mm -hmm. time, there wasn't a part four because that came out years later. Um, finally, I got my uncle to record the second one on Cinemax for me, and I saw it, and. It was like a completely different movie. First of all, the entire cast is different. Melvin, the, the Toxic Avenger, the monster. Yeah. Uh, the girlfriend, Claire, who was named Sarah in the first movie. Now she's Claire. There's all these different actors. All, it doesn't really continue the story. It's almost like a reboot. Toxie's voice is different. In the first movie, they used a lot of prosthetic makeup. In this one, they used this cheap latex mask. It's a totally different thing. But it, the second one grew on me. Um, specifically because of the kills. There's one where there's this guy attacking him, so he takes a hammer and hammers the guy into the ground, and then you, you just see the hat and the feet like jumping around on the ground. <laughs> oh, man. He takes this little black midget guy that tries to go after him, and he crumbles him up and turns him into a basketball and shoots him into a basketball net. So do you like the second one? I like it a lot. It's oh, yeah. definitely not as good as the first one, but it works in a different way. It's very oh, no. comical. It's like watching a live-action cartoon. I would like to show you the second one. The okay. second one is pretty funny. I could be down. After that, now the, the second and third one, it's one of those things where it was they, they filmed them at the same time. What happened was they it was supposed to be one movie and they shot too much footage. It, they, they didn't think a four-hour Toxic Avenger movie would be feasible. So what they did was they basically split it into two films. They took the best stuff that they shot and put it in part two. So part three is the one where... It's very disjointed. The They're, leftovers. <laughs> yeah. There's not much Pretty of a much. story. The third one, Toxie fights the devil, which is kind of cool on paper, but the beginning part of that movie is Toxie working for Apocalypse, who's the bad guys in the second movie. All of a sudden, he's working for them because they give him the money he needs to make his girlfriend, Claire, not blind anymore. Hmm. She has an operation to make her see. Um, it's 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 got some very powerful themes, but there's not a lot of action. It's more silly than anything. Um, it's watchable. I like it. Watch it once and you'd be fine. You don't need to rewatch. How it. many flaming stars does it get? <laughs> Out of how many? Five? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a two. How many dickless men does it get? Two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's... Um, and there's a lot of fourth wall humor in it. The third one is the most violent by far. I mean, he takes out this guy's intestines and jump ropes with it. <laughs> so it's... it's Only trauma. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then there's the fourth one, which came out like 15 years later. It came out in 2000. And by that point, 
It's like, um, an, it's like an afterthought at that point, you know? Yeah, it doesn't feel like they legitimately tried to make a sequel. It just feels like, a, like, hey, let's make a Toxic Avenger A reason for them to just whatever. get together and just do the craziest stuff they could think yeah, of. Yeah, it's all it is. Um, it actually has Stan Lee does a voiceover in it at the very beginning. Oh, my God. I think, yeah, I remember that. Now. He does. He's like, you know, sorry about those terrible so sequels. So awkward. This yeah. is the real sequel. <clears throat> but it's it's very off the wall. Um, it has some themes like it talks about um the high school shootings in a way which is why it's got that scene in the beginning with the mentally challenged kids mm -hmm. which is done very offensively by the way oh uh, yeah I mean, i'd say so it yeah it's very tasteless how some of this stuff is done but the message is still there it's got this it starts off with this um this group of uh their high school shooters and they shoot up a school of mentally handicapped children but these shooters are called the Diaper Mafia because they're dressed up as babies. Um, so they're trying to make a statement about like how kids are doing all these high school shootings. It's done very just, tastelessly, just, though. Just, I can't. Just listening to this plot is just kind of funny. It's a nonsensical movie. The Diaper movie. Mafia? Yeah. It's very nonsensical. Um, just, this is the one where Toxie... It's, it's got a comic book story where Toxie enters this alternate dimension where he's actually a bad guy, and these two Toxies cross dimensions. So the bad Toxie is in Tromaville, and the good Toxie is in Amortville, which is Troma spelled backwards. Oh, wow. Um, Clever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as clever as this can get. Clever. It's a very offensive movie, but... Tromo movies have a fan base, and yep. a lot of people who who dig Tromo movies and understand them really like. It's for them. their fans, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they know, they know who they're making it for. Yeah, not just themselves, but they know. By but them. I would say that the first Toxic Avenger is actually a movie that a lot of people should see, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and after that, if you're curious, check out the sequels. Sure. But the first yeah. one is legitimately one of my favorites. Recommended. So you were talking about Poltergeist. Why don't you talk to me about? Poltergeist. Oh, it's a great movie. I hope I hope you watch it sometime. It's just a really good scary movie. I mean, I'd rather you watch it, then we could talk about it, but you know, if you ever do. I'd rather talk I, about it then. See what you think. But well, I saw it, then, I saw it as a kid. It's a creepy movie. It's creepy. I remember some of the effects. Isn't it's there creepy. like some kind of spider ghost thing that shows up at the end? I don't, I don't Isn't know. there? Yeah, I don't think you remember anything about this movie, do you? I remember the dad with the face falling off in the sink. You've got to see this. It, it's a really good horror movie. I swear to you. I hope it, well, we should watch it. I swear, please watch this movie, and then we'll talk about it. But if not, you know, okay. you know that's fine. Well, what else? But I know you like Paranormal Activity. That's another good one. Uh, I love. Well, I was movie. just going over. I was thinking of movies like you. I, I have a set of movies I always watch every October. When it's horror movie season, you know, when it's horror movie season, sorry, you just you know the movies you're gonna watch. What are like some of your mainstays? I mean, I would see Nightmare on Elm well, Street. Well, yeah, Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, Friday the Thirteenth. Um, Halloween. I always try to watch the original. It's, it's not sorry. one of my favorites, I but know. it puts me yeah. in the mood. Yeah, that's um, fair. Yeah, I, it is a good movie though, isn't it? It's it's fine. I I just don't put it up on that high of a pedestal. I mean, I can see why there's faults in the movie, but there are so many pros to that movie. That I I just it definitely I, starts I've to... never understood why it's as acclaimed as it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's one why of those things. It? I don't know why. It, why is it? <laughs> I I. How many times I have you seen know. it? Do you think? Uh, a handful. Okay. Yeah, I actually still have my VHS copy, which has only been played like twice. So if we watched it, it's actually a pretty good copy on VHS. Um, yeah, my problem, I guess, has always been that it's the whole movie is is kind of a slow burn. I don't know if that's the right term, mm -hmm. but it's just a slow build, and um, there's no blood. Which some some of the best scary movies have very little blood. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, even Jaws, doesn't really have that much. Jaws has some no, shocking. Quint's death is pretty bloody. There's blood. The kids' sure, blood. I guess. Is Maybe that's bad. not a good example. Uh, yeah, it's but, pretty gory. But yeah, I mean, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean. Yeah, and. Um, Last I, House on the Left really didn't have gore, did it? Yes, it does. Okay. Towards the end, it does. <laughs> I thought it was more like suggestive. No, visually. They, they show quite a bit in that. Um, but I mean, gore, gore can work at times. But I mean, sometimes I'd really <coughs> s it doesn't scare me though. Well, for a while, it just grosses me out. Yeah. Well, for a while, um, I liked Halloween Two better because yeah. that one they. It's like a slash, like, like a straight up slasher. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of people would argue that detracts from Halloween. Did you say you watched Halloween too? You weren't a big fan? Weren't you saying it was kind of eh? The original Second, Halloween too? Yeah. Um, it's okay. It's, or, nah. It hasn't, over the years, it, it hasn't, I don't think it's, um. Uh, what's the word? It's, um, it hasn't aged as well as I thought maybe. Didn't Carpenter I, write that movie? I think he, he was did. involved in somehow with it. I think it. he wrote it. Um, yeah. 
And of course, that's the one where we find out Jamie Lee Curtis is Michael Myers' sister. Yeah. Which adds quite a unique element. This was the age of like Luke, I am your father. So at the time it came out, I'm sure people were thinking of it as a copycat. Mm -hmm. But that carried over years later with Halloween H20. When yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis comes back. Which is one of your favorites, right? You love yeah, I like yeah. that one quite a bit. Um, I think with Halloween, the original also, the acting, I'm sorry, the acting is not That's a that fair great. statement. I don't. I can probably even um, agree with you on some I, of that. I just, I find Jamie Lee Curtis kind of annoying in that movie. And I, I know that I'm probably in the minority in this. That's one of the things I found actually kind of better about Rob Zombie. I don't think the Rob Zombie film is better. There are certain aspects I think are done better in modern times. Like, I think the child actors in the Rob Zombie one, yeah. I didn't like the child actors in the original. Tommy Doyle and Lindsay, I didn't like them But as think much. of it this way, though. Most slashers from that era had bad acting anyways. I mean, just uh, all of them. I know, but Halloween is the one that's held on, on high Because its scares were so effective. And and that's the thing. I, I was never afraid of it. It's musical it's, score. It's The musical the score is great. Him carrying the babysitter. The musical to... score has a lot to do with it, I think. Yeah, it does. Um... Definitely. And there are some shocking... I, I, for some reason, I like the shot where the kid yeah. runs down the school step. And yeah. They just show and then him it pans him across the gate as yeah. he follows him. Yep. Yep. Gets in the car. Stuff the like camera's that. Still and on him. the fact that Michael Myers is in the background of a lot of shots, yep. which I didn't f realize... You don't see until later when you watch it again. You realize, yeah. wow, there's all kinds of little times he's actually... There's the some background. lighting things that they do. Subtle things like when... Laurie Strode, um, she's on the stairs and she's coming out of the dark and very slowly. That's see, the master shot of the whole movie. Yeah, Michael. The Myers. way the mask just kind of comes out of nowhere, like yeah. it just appears. And I know it was on such a low budget that they literally had to like run up and down stairs to fix the lighting and, you know. Yeah. <coughs> um, but yeah. I guess too, because it was made on such a shoestring budget. Maybe I mean I know a lot of filmmakers, myself included. If I see something and I know that it's on a shoestring budget and they're really trying to achieve something. Um, but as, Halloween is all about the subtlety. There's mm -hmm. nothing, there's no big thing in that movie. It's just a bunch of, like, the lighting, um, the way they shoot Michael Myers in the background, certain way they set up the camera. The effective sequences, um, you know, him wearing the bl the blanket with the glasses, the boyfriend's glasses, going back into the room. That's kind of scary. You know, way. and then yeah. strangling her and then putting his sister's headstone on the on the bed. And yeah, there are some creepy things The discovery it. of the bodies. It just sent so many staples of the slasher genre, you know, yeah. started with that movie. You see the influence. I mean, you watch Friday the 13th, you can just see the influence of Halloween. Well, Friday the 13th, they pretty much admitted they were ripping off Halloween. Yeah, Victor Miller said he went to go watch Halloween to get, you know, yeah. an idea of how to do the movie. And it is a lot of the same stuff. <clears throat> Kids that can't be helped by the adults, and, you know, it's all very similar in a way. Yeah. You know. But, yeah, I mean, you know, there you go. Um, it, right? So I try to watch the original, at least. Good. Um, the, the other ones, Halloween 4 is a pretty good one, because that one, I think almost more than the original does such a good job of getting you in the mood another one that i really oh, like return of michael myers yeah yeah that That's one was the first pretty good. one with danielle Harris. that one was pretty good yeah. i remember that one it was like trying to go back to its roots yeah you know what i mean and at that point it was trying to be it was on the heels of all the jasons and freddies but um it was still just legitimately a scary thrilling mm -hmm. movie you know um the I other agree. one i talk about a lot is trick or treat yeah you love that movie. And I I only saw one. I only saw one time at my house. I remember you came over. So, anyways, Trick or Treat was the anthology movie. Yeah, um, and I I like it because it, it just feels like a Halloween movie. It, the atmosphere is there. The, the jack o' lanterns, mm -hmm. the you know the fall spirit. You know, it gets into kind of the backstory of Halloween a little bit. Um, yeah, I I've always liked it quite a bit. I don't know why. There are certain parts of that movie that drag a little bit. I think, but. Um, the chick from X Men is in it. Yep. Um, what's her name? Anyway, um, there's a lot of comic. <laughs> anyway. book, there's a lot of comic book people in that movie. The um, the teacher from Spider Man is in yeah, it. Yeah, Doctor Connors. Yep. But you like Paranormal Activity? That's another good scary movie. Yeah. Because that one actually freaked you out, right? That was it, it really effective. did. It because it, it really plays with um, you know the sounds you hear at night in your house mm -hmm. when you're by yourself, and um, it, I love. I know that movie gets criticized for how slow it can be. You're just kind of waiting for stuff to happen. That is what's so effective yeah. about that movie. Um, and and that, it, it you're, just, a, you're a seasoned tour watcher, so when something actually does scare you, it's, it's pretty it's impressive. It's rare, yeah. Because you, you've seen I, it all, man. <laughs> I stayed away from found footage movies for a while because they're just not done very well, most of them. I mean, yeah. I like Cloverfield. That was okay, but that's kind of like the Hollywood big-budget version of It's all right, that. yeah. Blair Witch Project, so I yeah, thought it was yeah. fine. That was fine. The fine. marketing behind Blair Witch, to me, is more impressive than the movie yeah. itself. 
Um, I there was Diary of the Dead. Dan and I saw that in theaters, and I I didn't really think too much of that. Um, I think that's a, a, um, an example of a found footage film that's kind of done poorly. Mm. Um, yeah. but, There's a lot of those. Yeah, um, but this one, Paranormal Activity, I just think the setup that that's one that is kind of slow. But um, that's a slow burn, but it works. I really like how they they. Uh, my favorite scene is when they they talk to the. He's like a paranormal investigator, mm -hmm. and he comes in and he doesn't start right away speaking about ghosts. He starts saying, "Well, most of the time when people think their house is haunted, it's he gives them a list of things that it actually is, like pipe setting or something like that, something legitimate." But then he comes in like towards the end of the film, and he's like, "Oh, he's like, I can really feel this presence here. He's like, this thing does not like that I'm here, and yeah. I can't help you." And I, I just thought that was brilliant. That helpless and, um, feeling. The ending is a little hokey now that I think about it, but I, I still that movie that gives me the chills. And the ending of part two. Yeah. Really shocked me. Like, what was clever too is like you would think, why well, don't they just move the fuck out of the house? But it was a demon that was following her, right? Right. That's the thing. Yeah. That was clever. At least it filled up that plot hole because most people would be like, get the hell out of the house. Yeah, right. Which is what most people would do. Yeah, it wasn't the house that was haunted. It was her. Yeah, she, she was, was bringing haunted. it with her. Yeah. Where she like stands up by the bed and just stares at him. And, goes and you see, and you see the time code going for like three hours. She's mm -hmm. just standing there. I thought that was so. That's clever. another good slow burn. Right? You know, <coughs> slow burns can be so effective though, because when you invest yourself in the movie, it becomes scarier because you know yeah. you get to know the characters, you get to know you know. Mika, the guy with the camera, is yeah. a fucking idiot. You know, but <laughs> aside from that, was that the director? No, he was just an actor, right? He was just he an actor. Yeah. Actor. Yeah, they made that movie for like next to nothing, and it made yeah. tons of money. Yeah, that's a that was a really good one. I don't understand though why a lot of these people like. I think she was when they. They were talking a little bit about what they did, and she's, like, unemployed, and he was a teacher. And they own this really nice house, like, in really nice California. Yeah. I always wonder, like, how do normal people, like, a teacher and someone who's unemployed, like, how it's do they afford this house? <laughs> like, I don't know. But aside, maybe they just needed the house. Well, I had a little side topic, because we're, you know, Friday the 13th. What about the final girls? What do you think? I'm not talking about looks. I'm talking, like, you know, all every movie had a final girl. So, I mean... Are there any of them that you didn't really like? Or do you think really Friday the 13th had always had good final girls? If you're not talking about, oh, that girl was hot. You know, I'm not talking about looks. I'm talking about just general strength and, and courage and acting. Well, I, that's what's interesting. Was she is... hot? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I'm joking. I thought was... the first three movies, all, all the first four really. I mean, they all really did. Didn't they, didn't they all have good final girls? Um, well, that, that's what's interesting is, I mean, it, everyone five. complains about... The fine, you know, the the girls in these movies being stupid and and bimbos who run up the stairs when they should be running out the front door and all that stuff, scream. Um, but that's you know, in the Friday the Thirteenth movies, even Nightmare on Elm Street, the the final victim, the survivor, is usually female. So I would yeah. say to a degree, they're all pretty strong. Um, I, I, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I didn't really like Part Five's girl. I don't know why. She didn't really do much no. for me. She was one of the weaker. Examples. I think the weakest. And Part I actually, eight was okay. What was her name? Renee or whatever. Or Rennie. Something? Rennie. Oh, Rennie. She um, couldn't swim. She was she was fine. I'm trying to think. Oh, Jensen Daggett was the actress's name. Yeah, from Sword of Truth. Yes. That's so weird. Maybe yeah. he's a Friday the 13th fan. Maybe. Hello, Terry, if you're listening. Hello. I used to have a crush on Jensen Daggett, even though the clothes she wore in the I movie don't blame were terrible. You. But um um, yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh, I part nine didn't really have a final girl. You had Steve, <laughs> Steve <laughs> with the glasses. And, and Jason's, uh, what, what was it? Her, her, Jason's niece, basically. It did have a final girl. But I've been looking at like, a lot of ratings of best final girl in Friday. And Amy, Amy Steele seems to always take the number one. Amy spot. Steele, I would say, is definitely. And she's probably one, um, my favorite. Yeah. Just and I, I thought her, her, her courage and the way she tricked Jason. Tricked Jason. Yeah. Um, and they get into her backstory a little bit. She yeah. she did have a psychology degree. Mm -hmm. Very um, likable girl. Really yeah. pretty, good looking, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, but yes, you know, she had a relationship with one of the counselors, and um, yeah, these kids smoke more better dope than I do. <laughs> Here's something we can talk about. Sure, go. go for um, it. And I talked about this in my review that I just posted earlier mm -hmm. today. Was there's this myth with Friday the Thirteenth okay. where. Um, first of all, people are always like, oh, these movies have tons of tits and ass. No, they don't. They have a little really? bit. They have a little bit. The only ones that had a lot were parts four and five and the remake. And the only reason the remake has it is because it follows the myth of, oh, all the other ones had a lot of tits and ass. We should have... I don't think three did. 
Three has a little bit. Where? It's, it's when she's in the shower, you see a little bit. Oh, just barely. It's very brief. But and it's then, well, like the first movie too, really. You don't first really movie see didn't anything. have one. The second one has one wide shot of her coming oh. out of the lake. Yeah, you, that's yeah, it. that's a full doll. No, that's a full nudie. It's full, that but it's a, full it's a very wide shot. You don't see much. Yeah. You don't. It's a I wide did. shot. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay. Were you there? <laughs> no, I just you know. Uh, anyways, I had anyways. one hand on my remote. What? Never mind. Anyways. <coughs> Hey, I played that game too when I first saw the movie. We were a bunch of stupid ass kids yeah. rewinding it, that same part all the rewind it, rewind it. Must have been a great day on set too. Everyone trying to volunteer to put the towel on or yep. whatever. <laughs> True story. But um, yeah, I would say the first four movies, all the girls were good. But uh, what was your thing again? You said you were going the nudity. So yeah, going. well, they they they. But aside from uh, four and six, didn't have any. Six is the only nope. one that didn't have any. Um, seven. Seven had a very brief topless scene. Very brief. Where? Uh, the chicken bed with the red hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, she did short that boobs. One. That's true. And then in the eighth one, they showed a little side boob at the very beginning. And that's it. I mean, they, yeah, all they have, really don't have a lot. They don't have a lot. But they think of part five and they think of final chapter. And they well, think, oh, part my five God. is a sleazy movie. Right. That's the perfect way to describe five. That's like people's base point of the whole series. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's tons of new. No, you're right. Just a few of the movies do. That's yeah. true. They all have some, but it's like a breast shot and that's it. The other myth is that. Um, you have to. You, you, the characters are all off having sex and smoking dope, and then they die. Not at all true. Because Alice smokes weed. I remember that. Alice, she survives the first movie. She smoked weed. Right, but my point is, most of these characters who get killed don't have sex, and most of them don't do drugs. The ones that do die, you mean, or most? Yeah, most of the ones who died aren't off doing stuff like that. Think about it. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> think about it. The only people in the first one who have sex and that, well, you got the, the couple in the beginning. That doesn't really count. I'm talking, Jack and Marcy are the only ones having sex they and sex, they die. Yeah. That's it. Everyone else is, they smoke a little weed, but they're not smoking pot when they die. I always felt bad for Bill because he was playing Monopoly with those two girls. And it's like, man, that was leading to somewhere fun, probably. Eh. They're playing strip poker or whatever. I doubt it. We'll see. Yeah, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe was, in the director's cut. <laughs> maybe, he was, maybe he was gay. Who knows? Yeah, they die. Um, part two, they die. You know, people are making Part love. two, there's, um... There's only... The girl smokes pot. She died. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying that's not the only reason he kills. He's not... Equal opportunity. You could say in every her. movie that's what happens, though. Every movie happens to, to one cu To one couple, yes. Yeah, but that's still But that's recurring. not what everyone is off doing. No, but Not it's... everyone is off doing That's doing what you call things. a recurring theme, I guess. A recurring theme is, yes, you have sure. sex, you die. Yeah, but it's not like everybody is... That's not the written rule. You know what I'm saying? Most it was people, for Jason. Most people in these movies are just off fucking around like they're not having sex or doing yeah. drugs and if they are doing drugs it's well before they get killed did anyone fucking part seven huh? did they yeah the girl who was topless oh yeah yeah, yeah. they really, died you really don't like seven. i know no i do it's fine yeah seven, it's seven okay. is the one movie i think where a lot of them are having even part five there's only one yeah. couple having sex everybody deserved that in that movie because yeah. everybody was doing drugs any of the two gay italian hoodlums <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard they were gay. But they're off looking for chicks. <coughs> I, mean, they say, I know. Like, that's what I thought. But... we got to go bang these two slugs. <laughs> Anyways. But yeah, if you have sex, you die. I mean, well, wait. Yeah, I guess part five. It's just a recurring theme. It's not that it's everyone... It's a theme, but that's kind but... of the myth. You know what I'm saying? That's the myth. Yeah. Uh, usually it's one couple who has sex. Everybody else is just off minding their own Doing business drugs. when they get killed. <laughs> I guess. I, it doesn't happen as much as you, it's not everybody though. Right, that's fair. Well, everyone's fair game with Jason. Yeah. Even if you're handicapped in a wheelchair, you, you, you're you fucked. Matter. Yeah. That kill is so unique because it was just and the other and thing, the pregnant murder too in part three. Like, well, that was kind of bad too. See, that's the thing. They added that one line in there about we're pregnant. If you just take that line out, it doesn't mean anything. It's like three lines. She says it like three times in the movie at least, maybe two. I only remember the one time where she's. That's like, what happens hey, when you're pregnant. Right. And then it, we're pregnant. Remember. Or we're gonna eat it, eat the grass. Okay, but she says it twice. But yeah, okay. you're right. It but is I think brief. they did that just to make it shocking. So when she dies, yeah. you'd be like, "Oh my god, they killed her pregnant lady." Looking back though, it's kind of in poor taste. It's like, was that really necessary? No. Yeah. Nope. Even the <laughs> we, even the actress was just like, "I can't believe they did that." But whatever. I heard Dana Kimmel had like a big <coughs> problem with the nudity, and that's the reason why. Like, um, something about that that she wasn't happy with the violence and the nudity. And no, it, it, from what I heard, it wasn't that she had a problem with the nudity. She was like 18. She was very young. And um, it was something to do with her agent or something like that. Okay. Her son. She didn't have a problem doing it. It was. Uh, it might have been a little bit of why am I getting... So is Ginny number one for you? Or for, is it Alice? For strongest for, girl? Yeah, just for your favorite final girl. Uh, That's a good question. I go with Ginny. 
And then maybe Alice. Well, you got to remember, too, Ginny was facing off against Jason, and Alice was facing off about Mrs. Voorhees. So it's kind of hard true. to compare the two. With Alice, it's more... They're both survivors, I guess. Um, well, Alice really didn't. She died later. Well, that, that's also why <laughs> I picked Ginny. Alice died in a cheap way. If you're just talking about the individual films, I think it's really hard. Was Dana Kimmel up there with Amy Steele? She played. I Chris, thought she was right? pretty good. Yeah, Chris in the third one. I thought she was pretty um, good. Maybe not. Maybe not as good as Amy Steele, but still very. Yeah, good I don't know. I, I I think she went in the barn and fought Jason in the barn. I None think Amy all... Steele portrayed that character very well, actually. Nope. Whereas, I I think she was one of the strongest actresses. The Chris in part three has the backstory where she's faced off with Jason in the past. So okay, that I mean that's kind of cool that they gave her a, a relationship, a past relationship with the character. Yeah. Um, at one point in the script, oh, what she wasn't, what she didn't like, was they wanted Jason to rape her. That's what it was. Oh, okay. In the in the flashback sequence, they wanted it to be a sexual thing. Okay. And I think that was. In the movie, she just escapes, right? Right. He tries to do whatever he was going to well, do to her. Yeah, they just leave it like he was going to oh, kill okay. her, but they were because he pulls her to the ground. So you assume that. And I ran. Yeah. Rick. Um, and after so. that, I don't know. I don't. I don't think the characters in those movies are. All that strong, really. Uh, after parts one, part six two, had a good final girl, sure. Why is she really final girl? Maybe. Uh, Why didn't Jason kill her? That was kind of dumb, though. Did he I just mean, leave Tommy her alone? Jarvis is the hero of that movie, All really. Right. I mean, Laura Part Lincoln was a if it, good if final it was, girl. Um, yeah, yeah, but she had an unfair advantage. As much as yeah. I love that character, <laughs> she had an unfair. She had an unfair advantage. Well, Jason's yeah. undead. That's unfair. That's an that's an unfair advantage. You know what I'm saying, though. <laughs> She, it's not they like, she didn't outsmart Jason. She just had this unfair advantage yeah. that she could use special powers. I know, poor Jason was just totally outmatched. Part 8's girl, I, yeah, she's kind of just okay. Yeah. Maybe she's a little bad. She's definitely one of the more forgettable ones. And then 10, who was the final girl? Was there a final girl? No. Oh. No. <laughs> the android? Yeah, no. She, I mean, she ended up as a head in the end, so what does that tell you? Like, <laughs> if she was a human, she would have died like 10 times. So you go with Jenny, uh, Jenny Amy, Amy Steele, and then Adrian King. Okay, and that's about, that's about it. And then Dame Kimmel, probably your top three. I guess. <laughs> I thought she was. I fine. guess she was okay. She's nothing wrong with her. I just she overacted it a little bit. Let's remember the first four movies, which are pretty much my favorite ones. I mean, they do follow like the same story. Like it's like what what happens like the day after the day after. It's, yeah. It's Sunday the fifteenth. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. And they never did go back and retcon the final chapter to just call it part four. Because they do that a lot with like Raiders of the Lost Ark. They That's went a good back point. and changed it to Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost. You know what I'm saying? They never went back and re and made it just Friday. Temple the of Doom would be a good uh, Halloween movie. <laughs> it's pretty scary. I mean, it's not it kind of good, is. It's not a good Halloween movie. Yeah, fair <coughs> enough. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I probably watched. I love that movie. I do. I, I don't, don't really think of that as like a Halloween. Because some horror movies, a lot of them aren't really Halloween. Uh, the Universal Monster movies. Mm -hmm. are great. I just saw most of those for my first yeah. time last year. Yeah, I ordered the big Blu-ray box set, and wow, like a lot of them, I wouldn't say that none of them are really scary, but a lot of them are entertaining, and I can see how they would have freaked out audiences back in like the 30s and 40s. Um, one movie that wasn't in that set that I really wished was the is... The Blob. No, because okay. I don't think that's a universal movie, is it? Oh, okay. But keep going. Um, the original Phantom of the Opera, the oh, one from okay. the, the 20s yeah. with uh, Lon Chaney, I believe. Um, I saw that one a while ago, and I really enjoyed it. That one, I thought, when I first saw his face, I was legitimately terrified. Yeah. Um, and it's a silent film, but it's a really good one. There is a Phantom of the Opera in the set, but it's the 40s one, and it's in color. It's the only one in that set that's in color. And um, it's an amazing-looking film. I, I just didn't didn't grasp it. You know, it. the hard question, though, is what movie really still scares you? And it's hard to pick one. I, I can't really think of one that still unsettles me. You ever see The Omen? That movie yeah. kind of freaked me out. Yeah, that movie was a little unsettling to me. There was just something off about that movie. It just that one's kind of like The Exorcist to me. To me, they're kind of the yeah. same idea. Um, but it's hard to pick a movie that still scares you. I mean, we're we're seasoned pros at this stuff by now. <laughs> yeah, is there I really mean, a movie like, you can revisit? And because I think most horror movies do lose the scare factor the first viewing. I mean, it's Last House on the Left is still legitimately scary to me because okay. it's really hard to watch what those killers do because they don't pull back. And a lot of people would watch that and be like. How could you watch this? This is garbage. But there's a point to it. It's it's unsettling for a reason. Um, that's a movie I think they should show in schools to kids mm -hmm. when kids are off fucking around, going out to random people, trying to find drugs and have a good time. This shit happens, you know. And 
I think that movie makes a very good point of that, and it's disgusting and disturbing and ugly to watch, but it's an it's a movie. It's not really happening, but it's shot like it's really happening. And that movie, I, I always watch at least once a year because it is a very scary movie, and it's done by Wes Craven at a point where he didn't really know the craft very well. Um, I suppose Halloween, honestly, still kind of gets me the sometimes. The original... The, with its uh, images and the music. Yeah. There's there's a certain mood over that movie. Like, there's just... It's like death. There's like this... Um, if we're talking about scary feeling. movies, I would say probably the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is still pretty really? scary. Yeah. Oh, we should watch it. I've that never sometime. been big on it, but I... It's, it freaks you out. It is. It's very unsettling. Because that could happen, too. There are... Can't, well, there were, anyways. That's based on real Yeah, it, it's based on, loosely. But, um, yeah, I, there's some really You'll unsettling stuff You'll watch this sometime soon? We'll watch that? Yeah, I would. I'll come back this month. We'll watch this. Thing. I wouldn't mind watching. I can't that. talk. Do you okay. own it or no? Yeah. Okay. I would I love to watch that with you. It's a pretty short movie too. Well, yeah, it's it's just unsettling. I remember I hated that movie when I first saw it. It was just About so. This... It rubbed me the wrong way. It goes a little. I don't know. Some of this torturing and scream goes a little too much for me. That's the only part of the movie I'm like, eh. But yeah. But even it's that, very it's, well you get shot used to though. It. That's yeah. a very well shot movie. It's just um, and, gritty. And, and like, that's one where I, I like the second one a lot, but mm -hmm. the second one is a totally different thing. Yeah. But after that, that's one where the sequels are just terrible. Mm -hmm. They're all really bad. I've never seen a really good sequel besides the second one. It's been a while since you've seen Texas Chainsaw <coughs> Massacre? The first one? Yeah, a couple of years maybe. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, going back to the Universal ones, I've yeah. always wanted you to see Creature from the Black Lagoon. Because that's basically Jaws. Lock it up. I know. I want to see it now. It's really you good. You got me all excited. Yeah. I want to see it now. It's it's a, It's awesome. Um, I really like that one a lot. Um, I'm excited. Bride of Frankenstein and the original... That's a good movie. The original Invisible Man is really good. Yeah, Claude Rains, right? Yes. He's yeah. a good actor. The original Invisible Man is one of the best ones. I like Claude Rains. I really Rains. like that one a lot. Um, anything else? Huh? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Night of the Living Dead, I think, is pretty scary, honestly, at the end. The last yeah. like, half hour of that movie is pretty scary. That's a good one. Um... The one that I first saw, because Dan got me into the, all the Romero Dead The colored films, one, right? The but the colored. one he showed me was the Tom Savini one mm -hmm. from 1990, which is a scene-for-scene scene remake, basically. Um, I like that one quite a bit, but it is a scene... It's a shot-for-shot shot remake. Um, but it's uncanny. Like, all the actors in that one look like the old actors yeah. from the 60s one. You're right. <laughs> it's done very well. And I think it being in color... It adds something, but it also takes something away. Because being in black and white, you get Makes a very sense. gritty feel to it. Documentary, like, yeah. you know. But, I mean, the first hour of the movie's not that scary. I think it really kicks in overdrive on the like, last half hour. It's just balls to the wall scary. Like, the yeah. daughter eats her mom. And, and, and when like, the first the first Night of the Living Dead came out, there wasn't... No one really knew what a zombie was yet, so they were still getting the look of what the zombies. What do you call them? Down. Ghouls? He called them ghouls or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they weren't even really zombies. It was just the living dead. The fact they were eating people, I mean, that yeah, stuff was so... Yeah, that was so... pretty creepy. Oof. But the makeup, in that, the makeup isn't really there. It's just dead people yeah. eating stuff, you know? Yeah. So the makeup in the 1990s one, of course, is better. But, yeah, it's hard to... Ignore the first one. It's got a great claustrophobic feel, too. Yeah. They're stuck in that house. Yeah. All the other ones are good, too, but they, they're they such wide areas. You missed the claustrophobia. Day of just the Dead. Day of the Dead yeah. is actually pretty... That's my. That's one of my favorite zombie films, is Day that's of the good, Dead. Not bad it's, with it's my favorite, probably, effects movie of the 80s. And um, that one can be pretty scary. There's, there's um, a scene where one of the guys who's about to die lowers the zombies in that pit, and they're on that platform, and there's like a million of them mm -hmm. just being lowered down. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and, Day of the uh, Dead's really good. And Captain Rhodes in that movie is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the acting in that is, is way over the top, sure. Um, Probably purposely. <laughs> yeah, but that's my favorite Dead film for sure. I thought the remake of Dawn of the Dead really wasn't that bad. The 2004 movie? Uh, I thought that was actually pretty good. Is there good. a scene in that one? I seem to remember a scene where there was a guy on a rooftop holding a sign the whole time. Yeah, and that's how he, they communicated with each other. Right, and he's slowly like deteriorating. I thought that was pretty scary. Yeah, and Where they, finally they, they he turns out, into a zombie. They pick he, out like Jay Leno out of the crowd, and he shoots the zombie. that looks like Jay Leno. <laughs> they were playing shooting. Yeah, I thought the movie was pretty. Isn't like, Mackay Pfeiffer? In yeah, there? the first like ten minutes, ten minutes of that movie are amazing. Just that whole sequence of her when her husband gets bit and uh, the remake. Yeah. See, I haven't seen the remake in a while. I just we need to just watch like the first time. ten minutes. Is awesome. Okay. It's been a while oh, since yeah. I saw. I, I thought that was a good. I just remake. missed it for a while because it was a remake. But I, yeah, I know and the zombies ran. 28 Days Later is pretty good. I never saw that. Never saw 28 Days Later? Mm, no. no. That's not bad. What about uh, the original Evil Dead? I love it. Love it. That's definitely on my easy... It's just a good horror movie. I mean, 
I, li- I like the whole trilogy, but I mean, I like my horror, and the first one is just straight up horror. I would like to revisit Ash vs. Evil Dead. Oh, okay. I didn't think much of the series. I thought it was good. I was glad that they did that. I think I probably would prefer a couple of movies over a TV series, because as TV series go, they tend to draw stuff out a little longer than mm. they need to. Um, it got a little too silly, but I'd like to revisit that, because it really did tap into... It, it gave fans what they wanted, for sure. Um, and I really liked... They brought back, like, Henrietta from Part 2. They brought back, um, I think it was Cheryl from the first movie. Uh, Ash's sister in the first And they movie. were all from Michigan. That's something I've always been pretty proud Which is of. weird. They shot that series in New Zealand. New Zealand does not look like Michigan. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, like the original Evil Dead. Like Sam Raimi. Yeah, the all original from one. Michigan. Did that was shoot? pretty cool. I don't know if they even... They did, shot they... that in like Tennessee or something Yeah, like they didn't shoot it in Michigan. No, but they're all... And I believe it debuted at the Redford Theater. That's where Bruce Campbell it. was trying to get it to play. It's yeah. like a carnival ride. I mean, I love the Evil Dead. I think it's a really fun movie. It's just... I now, love the you, gore. Do you like that or Evil Dead 2 better? Oh, I, I can't. It's hard to say what I like better. Yeah. I don't know. Evil Dead 2 is such a nice mix of comedy and probably Bruce Campbell's best performance on that of that series, probably. Yeah. I he love them a lot all. Of I like stuff. them all a lot. I mean, it's hard to pick. But they but all are kind of they're different. I do like the outright horror movie of Evil Dead. Okay. The only thing I don't like about Evil Dead is that fucking laughing zombie. <laughs> God, I wish they had done something different. The one... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It just went on and on. Yeah. That's the only part of the movie I don't Remember he had like four different bookcases and kept falling out. <laughs> that pencil stabbing. I'll never get over the pencil stabbing. That's the one I remember God. as a kid I watched. That, that one, the way she like turns it into the ankle. And yeah. you, oh, God. And the tree Every rape time. scene. Yeah. yeah, that too. Ace of spades, jack of diamonds. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I, I can't... That remake, I just blah, oh, like whatever. <laughs> like the remake does none of those things. No. <laughs> I was like, the first one's good because it's scary. Army Darts is great comedy, and you're just like, yeah. And the remake does none of that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was okay, whatever. I don't even remember. I like Don't about Breathe. It. That was wasn't that a good horror movie? Which one was Don't, don't Breathe? When the oh, kids the blind, break into the blind, the blind guy's guy? house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really that was cool okay. movie. I like. Yeah, so nice, I didn't. I cool didn't really movies. like the twist ending that much okay. with the sperm. I... Oh yeah, <laughs> she shoved it in his mouth. I was like, oh god. Yeah. Yeah. Get Out, which I didn't think was yeah, scary. Yeah, we can talk about Get Out if you want. I mean, uh, yeah, you seem to like Get it. Out I didn't think was scary, um, but I did no. think it was kind of an interesting but kind it was of... Fun and... Yeah, um, I, I thought it was interesting that a black guy directed it, Jordan Peele, yep. and he was trying to kind of show the audience what black people go through when they're introduced to like um, a majorly white family and how they're treated. And it was, it was kind of and interesting. Yeah. yeah, it was interesting to see like... How they kept really pushing in his face, we're not racist, I would have voted for Obama for a third term. <laughs> and then you see how they give him like the yeah. special black treatment. Black is know? back in fashion. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was kind of, so I can see for like like the African American crowd, not to be racist, but I can see how that would be more effective for them yeah. than for I just thought it was just so original and I thought it just, it, it's so, it was just so, it was made for the times of today. and Yeah. And it said a lot. And it was um, funny. And when he wrote that movie too, he wrote it during the Barack Obama administration, but then oh, okay. it came out during the Trump administration. So he had to make some changes to like adjust it for that. I remember him talking about that. And I just love the ending when the cop car pulls up and you go, "Oh shit!" Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, "Help me!" You know, you're like, well, "Oh original, fucking a. The original <laughs> ending, it was it was yep. cops, and he gets yep. taken off to jail. But then when you see his friend get out of that cop car, it's yeah. like, "Yeah, everyone cheered." I told you and not to get in that so house. So cool. <laughs> and yeah, they just leave her to die. Yeah. <laughs> The flashlights, yeah, the, the flash. Yeah, and you didn't. Did you notice that was the guy from the beginning? That the guy wearing the weird farmer's clothes. Didn't I point that out? To I you? didn't notice that. I oh, was, okay. Because when they introduced him, I'm like, who is he? Like, why are they focusing? And then later on, they tell you that it's. And I'm yeah, like, oh, I couldn't tell because he was clean shaven and everything. It's kind of those movies too. You the more you watch it, like you see more. Like you notice all the. Yeah. There's all kinds of. Because the first time I saw it, I just saw mainly the beginning and the, the ending. Mm-hmm. So I I spoiled the the twist for myself. But, um, so I was like, this is weird. And then, um, I saw the whole thing and yeah, it grew on me. I liked it. I saw Us also, which I don't yeah. think you've seen yet. That was all right. Again, the twist is... But I told eh. you the cotton picking, the, the slaves. That's what, that's what slaves did. Remember how he stuffed his ears with cotton? I don't think there's any significance to I that. swear! There's a literal okay. connection. Okay. You don't think Jordan Peele meant for like, as an irony of what slaves did? I just looked at it. He was in the chair. The whole, <laughs> the whole, the whole movie. Right. The whole movie. He's doing that with his fingers. Yeah. He's like digging into yeah. his pants. That was pretty cool. The so. brother goes to unchain him or whatever, and he just freaking knocks him out. Yeah. And I like the, the oh, what does he grab? The deer head. The yeah. stab the dad. 
There was, um, yeah, there was a uh, deleted scene, which I really <coughs> wish they would have kept in there, where he's sinking into the ground, mm -hmm. and there's supposed to be, like, this skeleton down there with him, like it's a... A deer skeleton or something that's like yeah. supposed to be down there with him. Yeah, he didn't like the he didn't like the way it he didn't like the practical effect, which oh, yeah. I can understand. He wanted to he didn't have the money to like put CGI in there, which I think would have been a mistake. I think anytime you can do something practical, do it practical. And I saw the scene, and I can kind of see why he took it out. But the idea of there being something down there with him was kind of creepy. I like how he killed the mom too, like when she went to jump for the cup and he smashed against the wall. And I think she stabs him in the hand or something like that, and he just lets it, you know. Ah, yeah. I yeah. just, I just, yeah, I really like that movie now. Rewatching it again. It's and just, I think Jordan it's Peele fun. does a good job of, of, of putting in incidental humor mm -hmm. in the movies. I like when the cop pulls him over in the beginning and the girlfriend gets all mad. She's all yeah. like, you don't have to fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Another one that I saw recently, it's not a horror movie, but it, it definitely deals with race in a big way. Was the uh, the O.J. Simpson miniseries? Yeah, yeah, you're talking about that. Yeah. which I I couldn't. I grew up. I know we're getting off topic here, but I grew up watching the O.J. I was like in junior high when that trial was mm -hmm. going on, and even today I I don't watch a lot of news. I have no reason to watch news because it's all negative shit. So when that trial was on, I remembered people talking about it. Like I don't remember the car chase when that happened. I you know until recently I saw that I'm like, did that really? I don't remember the car chase. Um, before he actually got arrested. Um, he did it, too, by the way. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. He did. All right. I, mean, I was, like, in third grade, I think, when the verdict came out. I remember we watched it in school, and it was a, such a big The deal. only people who know are OJ. I know. I mean, you know. But there, there was I, I didn't realize how racial that whole trial was. And it, it happened on the heels of... It had um, everything. It was, it was such a fascinating case. Yeah. I mean, you can read about that case. It is really fascinating. Well, you can go on YouTube. The entire case is on YouTube. Yeah. Because, I mean, well, that way, he was a big sports star. and Yeah. It had, it had every all the drama. He was like America's sports hero. I didn't even realize yeah. that. I didn't realize how big yeah. he was. I honestly had never heard of O.J. Simpson before the trial. That's a good point. And you got that high-powered attorney team. And it is a really Dream fascinating team. case. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, rest in peace, though. I mean, that's a shame what happened. Yeah. But, anyway... So, anyway, so there I was. Our, our horror talk for the month of October. Maybe we'll do another one. We'll see. This isn't the end of Schmuckcast. <laughs> What's left of us? Is that it? <laughs> yeah. All right, so happy All Halloween. Right. Uh, maybe I'll have more of these during the yeah. month, and keep on watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another review. Peace out. Right. Naked men.